Hey guys, and a very warm welcome back to What's For Tea. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and that I find you all very well indeed. Right, so tonight for tea I'm actually making a classic steak pie and this is absolutely delicious. I mean, it's oh so simple. I'm going to be showing you how I make a classic pie crust, but you can of course just, you know, you can buy shop-bought um, puff pastry, short crust pastry, whatever you like. I mean, you can just use the stew recipe if you like, but I'm going to be showing you a quick and easy pie crust if you wish to do the whole thing from start to finish and it's a lot easier than you might think. I mean, like I say, you can make it with short crust pastry, puff pastry, suet pastry. You can use just the top crust or the top and bottom crust. In this country, traditionally, it would just be a top crust over your stewing steak, um, usually puff pastry. And like I say, I do do that from time to time. But tonight I'm going to be doing um, a, a rather unorthodox <laughs> top and bottom crust. So don't come for me. I know it's not traditional, but... You know, this is just what we like to do from time to time. And like I say, it's absolutely delicious and a lot easier than you guys may think. Right. So enough of that. So I'm going to go on and show you what you're going to need if you want to, you know, follow along with this wee recipe. So first of all, I'm using 200 grams of frozen butter. Just stick your butter into the freezer. You know, that, this, I'm, I'll explain this later on, but it's quite important that your butter is as cold as you can get it so just pop it into the freezer you'll also need one pint of beef stock you'll need 320 grams of plain or all-purpose flour plus a wee bit extra for dusting and thickening your gravy later on you'll need 500 grams of diced casserole steak you'll need between 8 and 10 tablespoons of iced water you'll need one large onion just roughly chop it it doesn't have to be pretty it's just getting chucked in anyway you'll need one beaten egg this is just for glazing the top of your pastry at the end you'll need one tablespoon of lemon juice you'll need olive oil for frying and you'll need some salt and pepper just as you go along just uh, you know to suit your own taste right so that's it so let's go on and we'll see what we do next. We're going to start off with your slow cooker, so you want to whack that on first, get it onto a medium heat, and then we'll move on, and then we'll uh, see what we do next, yeah? So let's go. So the first thing is, like I said, you, you, you do, you want to get your slow cooker onto medium, and just pop your stock in. And by the time you come back, it'll be nice and hot. So it's time to start your pie filling. So onto a chopping board, spread some plain flour out and pop your meat on top. You just want to sort of rub your meat into the, the flour or the flour into the meat and just make sure it's all thoroughly coated on all sides. This is going to protect your meat because it's going to be frying, you know, at quite a high heat to sear all that lovely flavour in. And it's also going to act as a thickener later on. It's going to help thicken your gravy later when it's in your slow cooker. So just take a couple of minutes, guys. Just rub it all in. And like I said, this is plain, all-purpose flour. With a wee dash of salt and pepper added. So once you've done that, you can pop over and uh, get some olive oil into the bottom of a pan. You want this quite a high heat because you are going to sear your meat. So just pop your oil into the bottom of the pan, get it up to a sort of medium to high heat and just pop your meat in and it'll immediately start to fry. So once it's all in there, just give it a good stir and sort of keep it moving around. And just make sure it's browned on all sides. This won't take long guys, this will take four or five minutes maybe. It doesn't take long. Like I say, I mean you're not cooking it through, you just want to get a nice seal on all of those edges. And once it's just about browned, you can add in your onions. 
Now by the time your meat is fully browned, your onions should be done. You're just looking for your onions to go, starting to go translucent. You just want to take that sort of rawness off them. Again, you're not looking for these to be cooked because everything's going into the slow cooker for hours, so that, you know it's going to cook anyway. It's just to pick up some of that nice flavour from the beef. And once you're at this stage, that's you done. And just pop over to your slow cooker and by this stage your stock should be nice and warm. And just pop in your beef and your onion mixture from your pan. The smell of this was incredible. <laughs> Do you know, I don't know what it is, but there's something about the smell of fried onions I just absolutely love. I think it when I think it's actually because when I was younger I used to go to a lot of, you know, street fairs and town fairs, you know, you've got the, the sort of burger vans and the, the, the wee stalls that sell the hamburgers and things and that was the same kind of smell. And I absolutely loved it, so I did. I think that's what it reminds me of. That's why I love it so much. So that's you. So what you want to do, just pop your lid on and turn it up to high now. And you want to leave that in there for five to seven hours. Now this will just depend on your your own meat, how long it takes. So we're now going to go over and do your pie crust. So you want to start off with your plain flour in a bowl. Then you want to grate your cheese. Now it's really important this is frozen. So just go ahead and grate it like you're grating cheese because the advantage of it being frozen is it's going to di distribute between your, your flour and your pastry a lot easier than if you're rubbing, you know, big lumps in. This is going to go through your pastry and it's going to be a lot more evenly distributed and uh, it's going to give you a lot more, you know, a nice consistency between the layers. We'll just put it that way. And you also want to use freezing cold water. This has been in the freezer. <laughs> You only want to use about eight or ten tablespoons and this will just again it'll depend on your own humidity how warm your kitchen is that kind of thing but you'll know yourself when it's starting to come together so you just want to cut your butter into your flour with a knife don't use your hands because this is going to melt your butter and that you don't want that you want to try and keep everything nice and cold so just use a knife keep going around your butter and your flour until it's all incorporated and that, again, this will take about five minutes to be combined properly. So that's it, just about there. And then you want to start adding your water. Just start off with four or five tablespoons to begin with, guys. And you're just looking to create a firm dough, just till it's starting to come together. You don't want this wet at all, or sticky. And to pop your lemon juice in as well. Your lemon juice is going to help keep your pastry nice and moist and stop it from drying out so much. So that's quite an important step. So just keep adding your water till it just starts to come together. And like I said guys, you don't want to be touch touching this with your hands because you don't want to melt your butter. And once you feel it's starting to resist from your knife, you'll know you're there. Another wee couple of spoons of water, and that'll be me. And I can just feel this now starting to resist, so 
It's hard to explain <laughs> unless you're actually doing it, but once you're doing it, you'll know what I mean. So you just want to get into your hands and just mould it into a ball. You don't want to overwork this either, guys. Just keep, you know, mould it until it's in a ball and, you know, you don't have to keep pounding away at it. Because you don't want to overwork the gluten or it'll just end up really tough and stiff. So you should have a nice firm dry dough and a nice clean bowl. If it's looking like this, you know you've done it right. But like I say, it's not difficult. Next thing you want to do is pop it out onto your surface. Wrap it in some cling film and let it rest in the fridge. And like I say, I mean, you don't have to do this crust. I mean, you can, you can of course, buy shop bought. You know, you can get it from most supermarkets if you prefer. But if you want to do it from scratch, this is just what I am cho choosing to do today. Leave it in the fridge for about an hour just to chill and relax. Leave it to chillax. <laughs> oh dear. The jokes are bad. So this is an hour later, guys. You just want to pop your pastry out the cling film onto a floured surface. Again, this is just plain all-purpose flour. Just flour your rolling pin and give it a roll. Now you're just going to roll this out flat and fold it over, roll it again and pop it back into the fridge. So this, I mean, is quite time consuming, but it's nowhere near time consuming. I mean, if you are making a puff pastry, for example, it can take you quite a, quite a few hours. So if you've got loads of time, then that's fine. But if you don't have loads of time, then a pastry like this is perfect. This is about a twentieth of the time that it would take you to make a puff pastry from scratch. And just keep flipping it over and rolling out. Yeah, elbow grease required. So I'm trying to get this into a sort of rectangle shape. I just like to batter the sides and batter the top and eventually you'll get it into a nice long rectangle shape. Just fold it over into three, wrap it back up and then roll it out again. Because my butter was so cold, you know, and the house is quite, well the kitchen's quite cold so I'll, I'll get away with doing this. But if you're, if you know, if you're, if you've, you're, in a quite a humid climate, or it's quite warm, you'd have to actually pop this back into the fridge after every fold before you roll again. But because I'm in Scotland, I get away with doing this. <laughs> so I'm just folding up again. And rolling again. And you're just, you know, you're, all you're doing here basically is creating layers for your pastry so that it's not completely flat. The more you fold it over and roll, the more layers you're going to get. But like I said, if you're in a humid climate or your kitchen's very warm, you will want to pop this back into the fridge after every fold before you start to roll again. And as I said, because I'm in Scotland and it's absolutely freezing, <laughs> I get away with doing this. And just keep rolling. And then you just want to pop it back into the fridge again for 30 minutes to chill and relax. And back into your cling film. You can just leave it there until we need it for the pie top later on. Now 
Now we're going to go back to the stew or your filling. This is four hours later and it's just cooking away there quite happy. I just like to check back and give it a wee stir and also add a wee bit of thickener. I've just used two tablespoons of plain flour and some water mixed into a paste and I've just mixed that in. And when you come back in a couple of hours that'll be lovely and thick and just the right consistency for a pie filling. Not too thick, not too thin. And it won't take away from that flavour of your gravy. So give it another two or three hours. Like I said guys, it'll depend on your beef, what sort of beef you've got. So it might take a bit longer, it may be ready quicker. So this was two hours later. And that's absolutely ideal for what I'm looking for. It was actually thicker than it looks. It looks quite watery here, but it wasn't as watery as that, trust me. Because if it was, I would have thickened it up another wee bit. But it's actually as thicker than than what it looks. And the smell was divine. Nothing nicer than a nice warm stew in a cold night. So pop your lid back on and by the time you do your, your pastry and get your pastry sorted out that'll be done and ready to go. So get your pastry back out your fridge, flour your surface again, flour your rolling pin and start to roll for the last time. So again, you're looking to get this into a rectangle because you want to get it into the bottom of your pie dish and you also want to create a lid. So just make sure you're rolling it up, you know, rolling it out big enough to line your baking tray and cover your baking tray if you're deciding to use a base and a lid. If you're just using a lid, then obviously, you know, it doesn't really matter. I usually do just use a lid, but for a wee change, I said, I'll just do a base as well. And this pie will feed three people generously. So I just like to try and shape the sides and the top, just simply by bashing the side of the pastry with the rolling pin, and that'll give you the sort of shape that you're looking for. You only want this about half an inch thick. You don't want it too thick or it won't cook, especially if you're putting, you know, a bottom layer under your mixture. You don't want it too thick because it'll just be raw. So this is me just measuring out and seeing where I need to cut. I'm just using a, an enamel pan, sort of traditional pie tin. So that looks about good enough for me. So I'm going to start off and do my bottom layer of pastry first. Now I'm rolling this out quite thin because obviously the stew mixture is going on top so you don't want it too thick because you do want it to cook obviously. So just lay that in and gently push it in. Lift it, lift it up and sort of push it in with your fingers. And then just go in with the palm of your hand and push out any air bubbles that may be in there. Try and, you know, be careful not to, to rip this, guys, because you don't want the gravy leaking through and going under, you know, underneath the pastry, or that would just make it soggy. So try not to get any holes in there. Just do it, you know, take your time and be gentle. There's no rush. Just use the palm of your hand, your fingertips, and a bold hand to get into the, the corners. And that's that. And then you just want to pop your meat and your gravy inside. Now you can either you can use an egg wash on the on the top of this pastry here, or you can just do what I do and just pop your pastry lid on top and pinch and seal your edges together. Just sort of pull it gently outwards and that'll give you a nice stretch on the top of your pastry and keep it nice and flat and even. Just try and pinch all the edges together to prevent your gravy from escaping. And pull it outwards and downwards over the corners of your pie tin. Press it down as you go. Now 
And then I just like to go around the edge with a fork, pressing down the edge even more just to make sure that, you know, there's not going to be any spillage or anything leaking out. Plus it looks quite nice. <laughs> traditional, I like traditional things. And then you just want to go ahead and cut off the excess pastry that's hanging down there. Now you can't really see what I'm doing here, I was out of shot for a lot of it, but you just want to use the back of a knife and just run it along the edge of your pie dish and that'll come off really easily, all your excess. And that was that. And then you just want to go ahead and pop a couple of holes in the top to let some steam escape because you don't want the whole thing exploding in, <laughs> exploding in the oven and the gravy going everywhere so just pop a couple of air holes in the top and then go across the whole thing with a beaten egg to give it a nice sort of glaze on the top of a lovely golden brown colour and then you just want to pop it into your oven for 45 to 55 minutes and gas mark 4 so it's quite low or 180 degrees and you're at the sort of middle of your oven and it'll come out looking like this. And the smell again, oh, the, 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 the kitchen smell incredible. I will absolutely love the smell of bacon pastry. And that's that finished. As you can see, it's lovely, you know, it's lovely golden brown on the top. I'm just going to cut it open and let you see what it's like underneath the lid. And it's absolutely piping hot. All you have to do now is pop it into a plate. So we have an ours with some mashed potato and obviously the pie and some garden peas. Delicious. So I'm going to be popping up Meals of the Week in the next hour or so and this is obviously going to be part of it so you'll be seeing this again so thank you very much again guys for popping over and seeing what's going on and until next time take care of yourselves and I'll see you then bye for now bye now